Hey guys, I'm Eric and welcome to State of Build. Today we are going to be building an LED pixel blade for the lightsaber hilt we built in the last video. I'm going to take you through the process step by step, so if you're interested, stay tuned. This is the shell of the blade we are going to be building. This is a clear polycarbonate tube that has an eighth inch wall. I sanded the exterior already and I'll talk about that later. The blade is about 34 inches long, but will lose about an inch when it's installed into the hill. The outside diameter of this blade is one inch and this will fit perfectly snug inside the hill we built. So the other materials you are gonna to need to build this is a one inch polycarbonate cap. That's for the end of the blade. You're also gonna need five volt pixel LEDs, at least double the length of your saber. So sabers are generally uh, 33 to 36 inches long. So you're gonna want double that. Um, these also come in 12 volt variations. Make sure you get the five volt or at least the correct voltage for your, for your soundboard. You're also gonna need this foam packing stuff, parchment paper, cellophane wrap, which is this shiny plastic that's really slick, uh, hot glue gun, and then sandpaper, and then some five minute clear epoxy. The polycarbonate tube can be found online. I got 72 inches for $12. The end cap is a little bit harder to find. I got it at the custom saber shop. They also have a few other variety of styles for the end cap, depending what you want. The rest of these materials can be found at big box stores online. They're generally pretty easy to find. The only ones that you might have a hard time with are the actual blade and the end cap. These are the LEDs we're gonna be making the blade out of. These are pixel LEDs, which means they're individually addressable. So each LED can be controlled separately compared to a strand where all the LEDs turn on at the same time. These are color changing RGB. Uh, there are 60 LEDs per meter. You can also buy these in 30 LEDs or 144 LEDs per meter. I wouldn't go less than 60 because it's hard to diffuse anything less than 60. 144 is the best because they're a lot closer together but the trade-off is that it costs about double to get that strand and um, it it's a lot more power to run them even if you run it at a lower brightness because there's more leds it's more power so for now i'm going to be running these 60 per meter and i'm going for a value saber not not the most expensive not the best the highest uh, brightness so but this tutorial for the blade will apply to whichever strand you decide to use most strands already have this connector installed on the strand, but in case yours doesn't, you're going to need a soldering iron, some solder, and might need to buy one of these connectors if it didn't, if your kit didn't come with it. Um, I've never seen one not come with it, so the, it'll be pretty rare, but the orientation that you install, that connector matters. You want to follow the arrow and you want to make sure that you install it on the digital in pin, as you can kind of see that black arrow. My strand already had it installed, so I'm just gonna be using it as is. The first thing we're gonna do is measure the length of the LEDs with the blade and fold it in half and then stick it back on itself. So I've already done this because I've been testing a lot with these, with this blade, trying to get the right diffusion materials and whatnot, but what you're gonna do is just measure it out so that the LEDs stretch the full length of the blade, fold it in half right on the top, peel that sticky off and stick them together and then just cut on the metal pads the end so that you have the same amount of LEDs stuck on both sides and it's the exact length of the blade that you have. Before I continue, I've been experimenting a lot with different diffusion techniques to see which one has the best result. With 60 LEDs per meter, you cannot get it perfect. You will always be able to see a little bit of each of these LEDs. It's hard to tell from the blur of the video, but it's there in real life. Uh, 144 LEDs, you can almost get it perfect, just barely noticeable, but still there a little bit. But regardless, I still think 60 looks good. It's plenty more for what I'm doing. I'm just letting you guys know before you build this that you will be able to see a little bit of each LED and it's almost impossible to get it near perfect. Just for context, for if you've seen Disney's Galaxy's Edge lightsaber in person, I think this method looks better than their lightsabers. You can barely tell that their lightsabers have, have each individual LED visible, but when you get one up close and you actually take a look at it, it's there. And I think this method 
doesn't show it as well as that method. So the parchment paper is what does most of the work diffusing the light. Layers of this paper spaced with air, or in this case, we're gonna use packaging foam to help keep the LEDs from rattling around, uh, is best. So this method alternates the, the paper and the foam in layers, and the more layers you use the, use, the more dispersed the light is, but also the dimmer the light becomes. This is a trade-off as well. Since I'm using a thick wall blade, I don't have as much room for extra layers, so I'm gonna pack in as much as I can. But let's say if you're using a very thin walled blade, you might want to you might want to experiment a little bit on how many layers you're gonna use because if you can't get your brightness as bright as you want it, then you would wanna use less layers. So I measured out the parchment paper and cut it in half long ways. So I have one layer here and one layer there. The first thing we're gonna do is wrap one of the halves around the LEDs tightly woven in a thick layer with no foam around it. And then we're gonna take that and put it on top of on top of a layer of the paper and the foam and roll that together. So that will put the foam as a, as a space layer between the parchment paper. To measure out the width of foam you need, just use the parchment paper that you have underneath. Um, this can be pretty frustrating to get perfect. As you see, you might see me struggle a little bit in the video. Use the hot glue if you need to get things to hold still, um, but don't use too much because the foam can melt and it'll ruin dispersion. It'll make like hot spots and, and dim spots. Um, you're gonna wanna align every layer with the bottom where the, the connector is. It's okay if there's extra on the stop on the top because we can cut that out later. Once you get that rolled up as tight as you can, the next layer we're gonna do is the cellophane wrap. It serves two purposes. It helps reflect some light back into the blade, and it's also very slippery on itself, so it helps us tighten the roll so that we can fit it inside the blade. I always leave extra, as you can see, it's a little bit longer. Just in case there's too much friction inserting it into the blade, I can tie some string to the end and pull it through the last little bit. Um, this cellophane is much stronger than the paper and the foam, so you can actually tug on it pretty hard. This next step is optional and it's something that I've already done. I sanded the exterior of this blade to give it one last layer of diffusion. If you don't like this, this uh, look of the blade and you want it to stay clear so you can see the cellophane inside, by all means don't do this. The diffusion techniques that we've done before are good enough, but this makes it even just a little bit better. So I just used some 320 grit sandpaper and completely sanded the exterior uh, to, until it was even across the whole way. One good benefit for sanding as well, it's hard to tell from here, but when you're whacking the blade around, it, you get marks and scratches all over it. The sanding helps keep those invisible. And then of course, if you do get some, you just keep sanding them out until the blade is clean again. So I have a few here that, from testing the blade out, that I can just sand off again. So it looks uniform. Next, we're gonna cut out this XX material on the top and glue on the end cap with some five minute epoxy. Don't use too much, it's going to be pretty difficult to clean this out later. If you use too much, it'll start ruining the diffusion technique. The 
last thing we're gonna do is seal the bottom of the saber with some hot glue. We're not gonna use epoxy because this doesn't need to be as strong of a connection. This is just gonna keep some moisture out, keep the LEDs from sliding out slowly over time and provide some strain relief for the wires. So guys, that's what it takes to build this, this blade. I hooked it up to my soundboard and a battery and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Dispersion's pretty good, it's hard to tell on camera. You can see the reflection of the LEDs off this table surface on camera. I'm gonna put up a picture now, edited, of what it actually looks like in reality um, because it's hard to tell from the camera. So here it is in blue and then we have green, red, got a few colors on here that we can just peruse through. So real quick, I installed the blade into the saber. As you can see, it's a nice tight fit. You, you don't have to force it in there, but you do have to wiggle it a little bit as you put it in, and then the retention screw will just keep it from being pulled out at all. But this has a really strong connection. I've been whacking it against walls, and this thing isn't coming loose, and it's not gonna break for sure. So real quick, I'll just turn it on so you guys can see it. So guys, that's all for this video. Stay tuned and we'll be doing the full electronics install on this hilt soon. Uh, take a look at the last video if you want to see how I built this hilt. And as always guys, thanks for watching.